As far as their weekly tips, I have a um, kind of different one this time. Um, I started uh, kind of tinkering around with Redux Toolkit, and I really like it. I actually yes, have yeah. to say, like, if you, again, I know that you have a little bit different setup as far as your, uh, like, the state management. And actually, that's something interesting that I want to, like, ask you. I know that you kind of, we already covered it, but every time I kind of forget and then I want to ask you one more time. But uh, if you have, like, bigger application where at some point, let's say, context is not, you know, cannot get the job done, actually, Redux Toolkit is awesome. Like, I, I was playing around with it and they have, uh, kind of fixed a lot of issues that that was originally. And uh, it really is kind of Redux with the batteries, where you you know just you you just yeah dump the dump the values and you're good to go. You're kind of now one thing the async is a little bit like once you get into async, it is I would I wouldn't say annoying, but it's it's getting more complex because they have that it's called a uh, query, I believe it's uh, React. Uh, I mean, Redux Toolkit query. And yeah, that one can get, you know, once once you start really setting up the responses and errors and all that, it, it can get a little bit more complex. But overall, I would say if you have the issue with, let's say, context API, and if you don't want to pick up some, uh, I don't know, some other state management library, Redux Toolkit answers a bunch of things and solves a bunch of problems and, and, and it's actually like I, I really enjoyed working with it and most likely I'll make a big project with it. What about you? Any hot Yeah, tips? I really yeah, yeah I really like uh, the Redux toolkit. I used it in one project, not like for work, but to mess around with it and really like their implementation and you know it does make things a little bit easier and straightforward for sure than just setting up Redux without it. So that, that that's cool that you got to play with it. Uh, my tip, uh, like, uh, so we talked about this, how we all like the styling of Tailwind, but we don't want to use it in our mm -hmm. projects. So I found out this NPM uh, library, which allows you to use Tailwind with stop elements. And so to me, I'm like, okay, now I have a good a good excuse to use Tailwind. Yes, yes. Uh, and does it does one that... Thing I, I'm sorry. Uh, ahead. Th does go that ahead, fix ahead. all the like issues with like enormous amount of classes yeah. that we talked about before? Yeah, because you just stick them into your style components. And what I like about that, if you for any reason need to remove Tailwind, like you you just do it in your style component because uh, it's a wrapper basically, and all your styling goes through that. So it makes it nice and cleaner, in my opinion. Uh, so I really like it. The only big issue with the I discovered with the Tailwind styled component uh, NPM package is that you cannot do nested styling like SAS uh, allows you to do. But to me, I'm like, you know what? That's fine. I could live with it. Um, so you cannot do like, let's say if I have a div with a class of hero and inside yeah. of it, I have another, let's say hero yeah. center. I cannot yeah. select hero and then go inside the hero and then let's say something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you can't do that. I was kind of bummed a little bit, but at the same time, I was like, you know what? That you can't have your cake and eat it too and not gain weight and everything else. You know what I mean? So I was just like, I'm happy that there's something. Uh, but uh, yeah, you, you couldn't do that with the style components. But Another thing that I've done before, style components, you can do the same thing with uh, CSS modules. And CSS modules uh, allows you to do, you know, the SAS, you know, the nested kind of CSS. So that's kind of cool. But I, I'm like, really like this idea CSS and JavaScript in one place, like, you know, when doing like React applications. Because I'm lazy and I'd like to move like my code and just have it work with the styling, uh, so I know a lot of people don't like it, but for me, like, you know, it makes it easier for me to reuse stuff. I have one question, and I just want to add one thing. Where, as far as nested styling, initially when I realized that you can do that, I was like, oh, so excited, and then I was just like getting really lazy, where I just left one class and I just <laughs> nested, nested, yeah, nested, nested, nested. and then it came like a few times it it came back to bite me where what happens when you, let's say, set up the hover, you also yeah. need to repeat that style. Otherwise, that one is more, uh, what's the name? Jeez. You know, in CSS, where uh, uh, specific, specificity, yeah, specific, you know, that one is yeah. more, more specific, specific. And then, yeah. you know, you also need to repeat that. So 
I kind of learned my lesson, and after that, tell me honestly, I haven't. I I'm. I have maybe used if it's a really big style component. I maybe have used like one level nesting. Yeah. But not two. I, yeah. I don't think even I remember. You know when it was two and nothing like that. And second, I just want to ask you. But let's say up and running with uh, Tailwind, was it like? Basically, do you follow their pre-made components or you go to the docs, then you take a look at, let's say, that is a margin property that I add, and then you just kind of do it manually or you look at, uh, what's the name, that Tailwind UI, I believe yeah. the name is, yeah. it's pre-made. Which, which, yeah, which option I do, do you both. Use? I do both. And like I really like Tailwind, just how it looked and felt. I wanted to learn more about it. So I did, they have their professional UI package, UI kit. So I did purchase that a while ago. Um, That's so, a good investment. Which yeah, I that, that, which I haven't made. It's it's not cheap. It's not cheap. Like I would really say, like if you're doing something that you want it like really pretty, very consistent, and you're gonna make money off it, like I would recommend. It's not a bad like UI toolkit. So at some point, I'm gonna make my paulbroslavsky.com website uh, in Next.js. I just put it on the back burner. Because uh, just have so much stuff to do, but that's going to be with Tailwind using that uh, their toolkit because um, it's really nice. I, I really like their styling; it's really clean, really professional. No, uh, that, so. their their stuff is amazing. Like the way it looks, like yeah. I, I always said, that kind of is like to me that is kind of a standard of how the web project should look like. And yeah, yeah, and the, the, like feel like it and the, the whole like the, how precise everything is no, it's, yeah. it's an awesome it's awesome i might part. like yeah i might like make a video showing people what the paid version look like if they if some people are curious because that way i'll have a good uh, excuse for spending 300 dollars. was it 300 at that yes. time oh. 300 <laughs> for for their ui kit yeah but but uh, but whatever their whole deluxe thing so i was uh, like you know what yeah i don't but I, to my defense, I stopped buying thousand Udemy courses, so so yeah, you, know, you know, had to had some money to burn, you know. 